Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk about the PHP uh, allocator, yes, but I'm going to talk about how you can exploit uh, remote binary bugs onto PHP as well. So that's the important part. Uh, I'm going to illustrate with one zero day, maybe one, like uh, another one, if we have time, uh, but one should be enough. <laughs> Uh, so who we are really quickly, we are a French offensive security company called Lexfo. We are based in France and we have two technical blogs, one about kernel and system, which is blog.lexfo.fr and more, which is more about web exploitation, which is ambionics.io slash blog. Um, well, PHP and I have been fiddling with PHP for, I don't know, 15 years. Uh, I really like the language uh, for exploiting it. Uh, uh, I've found a lot of bugs um, on like standard frameworks such as Drupal, Magento, stuff like this. But I'm also into binary exploitation, as I was uh, showed today. Uh, I've published a few sun sandbox escape bugs. Uh, you might think that sandbox escape in PHP is useless. Uh, it basically is, but sometimes it's useful because in PHP you could have like um, disabled, fun disabled functions. So you find an RCE on a website and you cannot execute any function. So it's pretty annoying. So using a sandbox escape bug, you can actually call any function you want. Also, it's useful to get access to the process that is executing PHP. And if you get access to this process, maybe you can access the master process that runs as root. And this way, you can probably get a local root on Apache or on PHP FPM. So that's what I did uh, a long time ago. And I uh, also maintain a PHP GGC, which is basically why so serial, but for PHP. So it generates payload for unserialized, which is PHP's desalization function. They called it unserialized for some reason. So a quick history of PHP and binary bugs. Um, as you know, PHP security is pretty approximative. Uh, like the comparison here returns true. Uh, it's a hash and a float, and it says true for some reason. And there have been like lots of bugs that are still unpatched because PHP doesn't really care if the bug has to be exploited locally. So you have many sandbox escape bugs uh, over the internet. The thing is, you don't really have remote exploits available in, over the internet. So I'm going to try and change this. Um, so what kind of bugs can we find in PHP? Well, PHP is a weakly typed uh, scripting language, so it needs to type check and ref count variables properly. Otherwise, you can have bugs of, such as type confusion, where, for instance, an array is used instead of a string, and use after free bugs where something is free, then you can fill the memory with something else, and then you get some kind of primitive, right? So it's very easy to exploit locally because you're just writing code. So that would be basically the same as uh, writing a JavaScript renderer exploit. You're just writing PHP. So you can set up for the bug. For instance, you can like create the e layout that you want. Then you can trigger the bug. For instance, you create an object and uh, call some function that is vulnerable. And then you can use the bug. You have your primitive, and then you want to get like code execution with the bug. So locally, pretty easy to do. However, remotely, it gets a little bit harder. One thing is really annoying. Uh, when PHP creates a, like receives a request, it will create a heap. Uh, allocate your input, so get, post, cookies, stuff like this, and then it will run the code and then discard the heap entirely. So if you have a, new, a UIF, for instance, so use after free, well, it will be gone uh, after the request, the request has been uh, executed. So you have to find a bug, you have to find a CMS or framework that actually uses the function that has the bug, then you have to find a way to trigger it, and then you have to use the bug afterwards all in the same request. So it gets pretty hard. Also, you have a few limitations. Since it's uh, data that is sent over HTTP, you have limitations on the size and you have limitations on the types. You can usually only send like strings or arrays. Uh, luckily, the, those are the two um, types that we need to exploit. So it's perfect for us. Uh, we also have to beat ASLR and Pi remotely, obviously. And we have one thing going for us. Uh, crashes are pretty much okay because there's always be going to be, a, always, sorry, going to be a main process. The main process runs as root. Whenever you crash a worker, it's going to be respawned automatically. Uh, the main process doesn't really care. It just responds it if it crashes. And also that means that the 
uh, every worker has the same uh, ASLR and by uh, randomization. So if you can uh, leak the ASLR in one worker, you're going to have the same ASLR in the other worker. So to illustrate a little bit, uh, when you do a remote exploit, generally you're going to have a few steps, a few interactions, and you're going to set up the heap, get some kind of leak with uh, some bug, then set up the memory, get some kind of other bug, and then probably like spray the heap to put your object instead and then get some kind of shell. In PHP, well, you have to do this in one request. So that's what it's pretty annoying. One thing to note though is that since we have the same ASLR and Pi uh, on uh, different workers, we don't really care about getting a leak in one request. We can get a leak once and then afterwards exploit with a second request. So let's say that you get two requests to exploit. So to me, it comes down to picking the right targets. Like what kind of function can I look into uh, to find the bug that I can exploit remotely with PHP? Well, the go-to candidate has always been entire lies. And why? It is because it's basically a way to interact several times with PHP in one request. Uh, entire lies is PHP deserialization function, as you can see in the payload here. In red, it uh, describes an array with two elements. And then in this array, there is an object which contains an attribute, and then there is another key that contains a string. So that shows you that you can basically create any kind of memory layout, then create an object, potentially trigger a bug on this object, and then use the rest of the array to uh, fill up the heap or modify the heap again and get a, a really useful primitive. So this is a really good function to find bugs into if you want to exploit remotely. However, well, Antialyze is not that much use anymore because it was pretty much a way to destroy any PHP website for, I don't know, 10 years. So I kind of wanted to look at something else. And so my idea was I wanted to look at uh, database uh, driver functions. The idea with this is that when PHP interacts with the database, it's basically a way to interact several times with PHP, all in one request. Also, that's a way to use a bug after you've triggered it. For instance, you trigger, you trigger a bug with one uh, SQL query, and then when the second SQL query comes in, you can potentially change the heap uh, layout and use the bug that you have created. Uh, the setup phase where you have to like set up the heap layout, it has to be done another way, but I will describe how you can do this. So uh, I reported two bugs. Uh, the first one we're gonna talk about uh, a lot, and the other one maybe at the end if we have some time. Um, in any case, the second one, I couldn't find any uh, useful CMS or framework that used it, so it's basically a useless bug. The other one, however, it affects uh, any kind of database management utility, so adminer, PHP my admin, any ki kind of share hosting, I don't know, CMS, um, stuff like this. So before I talk about the bugs, we have to talk about PHP's internals. And don't worry, it's very, very simple, and we're all only going to keep it for anything we need. So obviously, PHP is a weekly type language, so it has to store every variable with a type, and then the representation of the variable. So if your variable is a string, the type is string, and then it's um, the description of the data is stored in a Zen string uh, structure. For an array, that would be type array and Zen array uh, structure. So before being used, every variable is type checked, so PHP will check the type, and then it will dereference the complex object that uh, is in Zen value, and use this uh, object instead. We don't really care about Zvars uh, because they are mostly allocated on the stack or at places that we don't really care about in the heap. But what we care about are complex types. I will describe only two types. Those are the only two types that we need to exploit. So Zen string and Zen array. And coincidentally, it's pretty good because this, these, those are the only types that we can send using get and post data. So what is a Zen string? Well, obviously it stores a, a string in PHP. So if you create a string with like three characters, PHP is going to uh, create a Zen string structure and allocate it on the heap. Uh, the elements are a GC, which contains the ref count and some flags. A hash value, we don't really care about this one. Then the length of the string. And then right after this, the buffer of the string. It's not a pointer to the buffer, it's just straight up the buffer. As you can see in the X dump here, like you have the headers, so uh, the GC, the hash, and the length. And then straight after this, you have your buffer and the 
final null byte. So if I send a, c a string of uh, OX14 characters, it's going to allocate enough space for the header, so OX18, plus the length of the string, OX14, and then a null byte. Um, as an attacker, obviously, if we can control the length, we have a good advantage because if we can make PHP think that a string is way bigger than it really is, we're going to be able to see the memory that comes after the string. And by seeing, I mean writing and reading. So that's a pretty good uh, way to get control over the heap in PHP. The second structure that we're going to look at, and that's the last one, is an arrays. So obviously, it represents a PHP array, which is more like, like, it's more, it's closer, sorry, to a hash map than an array. And, um, we don't really care about what's inside it, um, but the last, uh, element, which is pedestructor. Pedestructor is a function pointer, which is called whenever you remove an element from an array. So in the code snippet here, pedestructor would be called on the first element, so one. Um, the good thing about this is that as an attacker, if we control pedestructor, that means that we control uh, the PC because we can simply clear an array or wait for the request to end. When the request ends, the arrays are deleted, and so pedestructor gets called. So now you have enough to understand the local PHP exploit. It's really easy. So you use a bug to corrupt the length of some Zen string. So the, the length is way bigger than it should be. Then you get read-write primitives over the heap for free, because you can just use the array notation. And then you can spray arrays and uh, in the heap that you have leaked, you can find the address of a pedestructor. You can just then change this pedestructor, pedestructor sorry, and uh, then you can inset the array, and pedestructor will get called, and you get code execution. Very, very simple. However, to understand uh, remote exploits, we have to go a little bit into the PHP's heap, which is the slim, simplest heap I've ever seen, so it's very easy to understand. Um, so two main functions one to allocate, one to free. Uh, to allocate, you use emalloc n to allocate n bytes, and to free, you use e free of some point. Um, the heap in PHP is a, a memory region of two megabytes. It's divided in pages, so you get like a five, uh, 512 pages. The first page of the heap is gonna be metadata. We don't really care about this one, but the rest is used for storage. So what do you store in pages? You store chunks. One page can only store chunks of the same size. So for instance, page 10 could store chunks of size 8, um, page 11 chunks of size 16 or 32, anything. And this is all determined by the heap metadata. If we want to allocate more than uh, 3072 bytes, however, uh, the allocation is going to be straight in pages instead of using chunks. So how does the allocation and the allocation work? Well, for each chunk size, PHP will maintain a linked list of uh, free chunks, okay? Which is called a bin. Um, <clears throat> so there's bin zero for chunks of size eight, then bin one for size, size 16, et cetera, et cetera, up until uh, 3072. So when you free a pointer, PHP will just take the pointer address, find out which page it is in, then deduce from the heap metadata which bin it should go into, and then from there, it's going to put the pointer at the beginning of the heap, so at the head of the linked list. When you want to allocate, it basically does the opposite. It finds out the bin for n. So for instance, I want to allocate 14 bytes. It's going to use bin 1 because it's chunks for size 16. And uh, it's going to remove the head of the list and return it for us. So it's a lethal structure. Obviously, there is a edge case where if the bin is empty, PHP has to create new chunks. So it will just look at the heap metadata. If there's nothing uh, in some page, it's going to reserve the page for uh, some chunks. Um, and then it will create the chunks in the page and add them to the free list. So quick example to understand it. On the very left, there is the heap with its pages. Let's say, let's say that on page 10, you have chunks of size OX100. Um, those chunks uh, are, uh, reside in bin 9. So if they are free, they are going to go in bin 9. So let's say, for instance, the bin looks like this at the beginning. If I free an element, it's going to be added on the beginning of the list. Uh, and if I allocate, it's going to take the elements from the beginning of the list, right? Very, very simple. It would be like tcache in C, uh, uh, libc, for instance. 
So now you, we have enough to understand the, the, the first bug, which is a heap overflow in the MySQL ND. So obviously, you need to understand what is MySQL ND. Well, it's a PHP's own MySQL driver. So PHP devs developed this thing. And it's pretty, pretty horrible. Like, I tried to fuzz it, and like I couldn't reach any important part of the code. It was just crashing, crashing, crashing. Plus, it's super slow because it's PHP, obviously. So I was like, I hate fuzzing anyways. I'm going to read the code. And that's what I did. And so I got this bug. Um, this bug is pretty easy to spot, actually. When you connect to a database, uh, the database can ask you for several authentication methods. And if the database tells you to uh, authenticate with clear text, PHP will just send a MySQL header of size 4 and the clear text of the password. The thing is, if your password is big enough, it's going to want to allocate your password with the header, but it only allocates the size for the password. So when it does the même copy afterwards, you get a four bytes uh, all of bound write, so four byte overflow. So to trigger the bug, you just have to force PHP into connecting to your database with some huge password, and your database then says, I want the clear text password, and then PHP allocates the wrong buffer size, and then it gets the overflow there. So the target of choice for today was Adminer, which is a database management PHP utility. Uh, we often find this in pen tests because like the sysadmin puts it there, they use it once and then they forget it exists. And then you just go onto the website, type slash adminer.php and then you get this. Um, so the idea behind adminer is very simple. It's one simple PHP file and then you give a server address, username, password, you can connect to it. You can then issue queries, you can then import data, you can then export data. It's basically the same as PHP MyAdmin, like any kind of database management utility, but you can connect to whatever you want. And for us, it's perfect because we want to connect to a rogue MySQL server, a server that we control, with a password that we control as well. So if we go back to the primitive, uh, PHP will allocate our password on at least two heap pages because the password has to be bigger than one page. Um, so the idea is that we can overwrite the first four bytes of the next page, right? Very simple. Um, what can we overwrite with four bytes? Well, we could try and overwrite uh, a Zen string or a Zend array, but we would only overwrite part of the ref count, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, we could exploit with this, but it, it gets really complicated. So my idea was more to exploit by uh, overwriting partially the next chunk, uh, the next pointer of a free chunk. When the chunk is free, it is going to be in the linked list, so it's going to point to another free chunk. If we can modify the address of this free chunk, we can alter the linked list of the bin. And when we allocate uh, for these chunks, well, uh, the linked list is going to be modified and we're going to be able to allocate at different spots or maybe do other things. The standard idea behind this is that we try and make two chunks overlap uh, when we control the linked list. And then we can overwrite a structure such as a Zen string or a Zen array and we are getting pretty close to, well, code execution. The only problem with this is that whenever we use Adminer, the first thing that PHP will do is connect to the database. But to exploit the bug, we really need uh, to do a heap setup, like a, some kind of heap, of, uh, of heap layout that we want to have to exploit the bug. So the only way for us to do this is to use get and post data, right? On cookies, on whatever, but the input. So we can actually do this, do this pretty easily. Uh, as I'm sure you know, there are two things that you can allocate in PHP. Strings, uh, very simply, like page equal news and ID equals one to three. So you would get, uh, news allocated, page allocated, ID allocated, and one to three allocated, all as, uh, then string objects. And you can also send, uh, arrays. Uh, if you use the bracket not notation, you can force PHP to create arrays. That's pretty good, but that's only allocation. What we want to do is free as well. Uh, well, to do that, we can simply send the key twice. If we send the key twice, PHP will first allocate the first value, so in this example, value one, and then it will realize that there is another key, so it will allocate the second value, value two, and then it will free value one. So this is pretty good for us because only with get and post data, we can uh, allocate anything, basically anything, and free uh, basically anything as well. So this is pretty nice. 
However, there's one thing that is annoying. Uh, when, whenever we send a variable, it's going to be duplicated, so it gets allocated twice. So when we free it as well, it's going to be freed twice as well. But it's not that hard to uh, to to understand and uh, to bypass afterwards. So only with get and post data, we get a very precise heap setup, so that's pretty good. Uh, as a quick example, uh, as how we can do this, uh, let's say we want to create 100 chunks of size OX100, and we want to free one in the middle, right? So how do we create a chunk of size OX100? We send the string of size OX E7. Why? Because the header of the string is going to be added, so it's a uh, one uh, eight in hexadecimal plus the null byte added as well, and so this ends up being this ends up being uh, OX100. Um, so then we have our string of size OX100. What we can do is send it 100 times because we want 100, 100 chunks, and we want to free one in the middle. So we just uh, change the value of uh, some value in the middle of the array, so 49 here, and we get our heap setup. So it's very easy. So what is the current state of affairs? We can set up any kind of heap layout using only get and post. Um, we can trigger the bug by simply asking uh, Adminer to connect to our rogue uh, MySQL database. So the MySQL database asks for a clear text password, and that triggers the bug. And then we can use the bug because we can send arbitrary query results when uh, PHP sends uh, SQL queries. So let's try an exploit with this. Uh, so that's why I asked for the pointer. Um, so first thing that we need to do, a uh, good heap setup. So the idea is to have two empty pages in which the overflown buffer is going to be. Then the red zone, which contains uh, freed chunks. What we want to do is overflow here, in the pointer here, so that it points somewhere else. And then a huge region here, uh, which is one megabyte long, which uh, you can do easily uh, by sending uh, get and post data, uh, which is one megabyte long. And um, and that's it. That's a good setup. So then what, what can we do? Well. We have to beat ASLR first. So the idea was to make this pointer here, instead of pointing to one of these, point here. If we can make it point here, we can then control the free list entirely, and then we can allocate whatever we want, which is pretty good. However, uh, we have to beat ASLR. So the first bytes that I care about are these ones in the middle. That those are the, like the highest bytes that we can, uh, uh, uh touch with the overflow. And, uh, so this byte and a half, uh, you have 4096 possibilities, so you can just brute force it over HTTP is not that long. But there's one question. How do we know that we are indeed pointing to huge? Well, to do this, we can test every uh, address twice. Once with the region filled with zeros. So, when we actually point to this address, we will get this uh, a pointer, which points to null, because we only have zeros here. And so the allocation will work. However, if we fill the region with FF, the free list will be a little bit fucked. And so PHP, when it allocates, will simply crash. So this, this allows us to determine the first one and a half bytes. We got a few more, few more to do. The idea is to repeat the process keep the same address, but this time split the region in two. On the top, zeros, on the bottom, FF. So I start the exploit again. If it crashes, that means I am on the bottom. If it doesn't, I am on the top. And so I can determine very precisely where I am in this region. There's one more byte to determine. This is the fifth byte. Byte uh, five is not reachable with the overflow because we have a four byte overflow. So the only way to do this is simply, since we control this, this region, is to create a fake pointer here. Remember, we, we know these bytes now. So we create a fake pointer here and brute force like two fifty six possibilities. And after this, we have beaten ASLR. And we also have a complete control over uh, some free list. So this is pretty good to exploit. The next thing that we need to do is disclose the heap to get information about uh, the heap layout and uh, the pointers that are in there. Well, to do this, since we, since we control some free lists, we can make it so two chunks overlap. And so we allocate the chunk on the bottom with a string, and then we allocate the chunk on the top to, overf uh, to overflow into the first one. And from there, we can just change the length 
of the string. And when the string is displayed, well, it's going to display the whole heap with it. So we get a, a, a heap disclosure and we get a lot of information from this. One of this information is when we create arrays, uh, at some point we're going to see them in the heap. And so we're going to find the address of pdestructor. Pdestructor's address is in the PHP's main program. So this way we beat by because we have the address of the main program. Then afterwards, what we can do is simply con continue to use the, the free list that we have modified to go and modify the whole uh, Zen array structure and change the pedestructor. If we change the pedestructor, we can just use a stack pivot or just simply call system or zip system, the PHP equivalent. And when the array gets destroyed at the end of the request, well, it's going to call pedestructor and we get code execution. So you probably expect a demo now, but w I was actually uh, unlucky. Uh, when I tried to report the bug, uh, PHP actually changed the code, um, but it, w it wasn't really on purpose. Uh, I hadn't uh, reported the bug already, but uh, I saw that they, uh, they, had, uh, they added some patch uh, because I think there was a memory leak at some point. And so they added a null byte after the end of the MySQL password. So the exploitation was dead because you wanted to control the last byte of the, um, of the overflow. And if it is zero, then you cannot point to the huge region. However, it made me think that I was really stupid and there was a way better way to exploit. So I'm going to show this way now. Um, we have a four byte overflow, yes, but the allocation of the buffer is page aligned. So if we send a buffer of size OX2000 minus three, the overflow is actually on one byte. So we don't have to deal with four bytes of overflow. We can just use uh, one byte overflow, which is uh, inherently a null byte, to get a null of by one in the heap. So this is a kind of exploit that is pretty standard. So it's pretty easy to get an idea of how to exploit. So the idea is we can change one byte from anything to zero, zero. Well, what we want to do again is change the next byte, uh, the next uh, pointer in a free list. And for this, I will use uh, chunks of size OX70. The reason is um, you want to pick chunks that are not very much used by the application normally, because otherwise, when you do your heap setup and then PHP connects, then you're going to have a lot of new allocations of this size, and it's going to mess up your, your setup, so it's annoying. So I use this size. And also, the good thing about this size is that you actually get uh, useful addresses. For instance, here, if I override the two last bytes, it gets to zero, so it doesn't change anything. If I modify this one, it's actually going to point to this one again. So you have some kind of circular uh, dependency, and it's going to be annoying. Again here, it points to this one, so it's circular again. It sucks. What I want is this one, 1C0. If I override this one, it points right before 150. So when 150 gets allocated, then this one gets allocated, but it's been modified. It points right, uh, right before this, and you get two chunks that overlap. And then we repeat basically the same exploit before. We have two overlapping chunks. Uh, we get code execution from this. So <clears throat> uh, you have to keep in mind this is a new exploit. So we don't have ASLR. We don't have a PI. We, we don't know anything. So how can we do to do this? Well, basically the same setup as before. We don't need the huge block anyways. We cannot point to it anyways. Uh, we just do something like this. But in this exploit, we really need to know which pointer is here. So how do we know this? Well, a good way to know this is simply to uh, free everything, but keep only one value allocated. If the value that we kept allocated is on the top of the page, it won't crash. But if it is at not the top of the page, PHP will get overflowed here, and it will crash. So here, if it's on the top, we, do, we just overflow in the ref count, and it doesn't crash. So this way, you can determine uh, the the post index of the value that we are modifying. The thing is, uh, I could use dichotomy here in theory. The thing is, well, it's not possible because whenever I send post data that has a different size, well, PHP is going to do a lot of different allocations. So it's going to mess up everything I've, did, uh, I've done here simply because I've sent a few more uh, chunks. And so the heap layout is going to be fucked, and I'm going to be fucked as well. So what I do is I only like free everything and only send one more element. And this way, I uh, I don't have the problem. In any case, it's pretty fast. Uh, I think I have like 100 requests maximum. Uh, it gets done like really, really fast. 
So now it's basically uh, a problem of setting up the free list. So what we want is we want to allocate this one first because it's going to be uh, overlapped with the other one. And then we want this guy to point here. Why? Because this means that here you're going to have the pointer to here. And then when we overflow, it's going to modify C0 here. So it's not that hard to do with get on post data. You just have to do a couple of freeze on the, on the allocations. If you have two pointers that are messed up, because as I said, when, when you allocate with post, it also allocates with request. You can just allocate free and then reallocate and we just swap the pointers around. So it's not too much of a problem. And you end up with this uh, free list here. So this guy gets allocated first. Then we don't really care about it. Then the guy on the top of the page here gets, uh, uh, is in the free list, sorry. And it actually points to the one whose byte we want to overflow. So this is the setup phase. Whenever then I trigger the bug, well, the byte changes. And so now the free list has two overlapping checks, this one and this one. And so then it's basically the same as spot as before. Uh, you make two strings overlap, you leak the heap, then you leak an array, and then from there, you can modify an array and just call a PD structure on this array. Very simple. Uh, I've got a demo for this. Uh, where is it? So this is actually adminer, but I have messed up the configuration, so there's no CSS, but you can recognize it, I guess. And this is the exploit. So live demo, so it might not work, obviously, but. Yay. So I just created a PHP file at uh, the web root so that it's easy to understand. I just displayed ID as well here. Uh, I lost my mouse. Is it? Oh, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> is this place strange or is it just me? No, it's fine. Okay. So Demo's done. Um, so I actually thought I was on a 30 minute slot. So I think I actually have 45 minutes, but then we can talk about the, the other bug. So a quick conclusion before we talk about the other bug. Um, PHP's heap has no protections, but finding a bug to exploit it actually requires a lot of uh, information, uh, luck, because you need the bug, then you need the CMS that uses the bug, and then you need to use it afterwards. So my advice, if you want to find remotely exploitable bugs, is to look into unserialize, maybe. Maybe there are still bugs in there. But you could also look at things that make PHP interact several times with um, uh, anything, basically. Database, maybe, I don't know, like five protocols in PHP, you can do a lot of things with them, maybe you should look there, stuff like this. Or you could also find bugs that do not disappear with the heap. And this was supposed to be a teaser, but since we have some time left, I'm going to explain it a little bit. So PG query params, it basically sets up the parameters for a prepared query for PG. And um, the idea here is that it will copy a lot of Zen strings that you have sent into an array uh, that contains uh, char pointers. So if I send like three Zen strings as parameters, it's going to convert them into a char array and then add them to the uh, array of char pointers. So if an error, uh, an error happens during the conversion, PHP will try and f uh, free every pointer that is in the array, but they won't really matter. They won't really care if the array is initialized or not. 
So that means that if I can trigger an error in the first element of the array, every other value is going to be uh, freed. But those values weren't initialized. So the primitive that we have is a call of three on any pointer. Uh, the thing is, this pointer, we can't really control it because it's an, in, an initialized memory. But um, how do we get a valid pointer into this memory? Because we know that PHP removes the heap on every request. The thing is, PHP removed the heap, but it will use the same memory region to uh, put the, the, the new heap. So that means that every data that we have in the old heap is going to linger there. So we have a way of um, putting any kind of pointer at any place uh, using one request and then triggering the E3 on this pointer uh, using another request. So that means that, for instance, uh, if we allocate differently in re request one and request two, we can make it so uh, we have a pointer that points in the middle of some Zen string. And if we have a pointer that points in the middle of some Zen string, when we free it, it's going to add the pointer to the next free chunk into it. And so when we display the string, we're going to have a leak of a pointer. Uh, same thing for Zvols. If they are allocated on the heap, if we, if we free the contents of the Zval, instead of pointing to the original value, so a Zen string or a Zen array, it's actually going to point to uh, whichever chunk was freed before. So using this, we can actually get a code execution using this function. But as I said, Nobody uses this, so it's pretty useless. And I'm done. Uh, thanks, Charles, for this uh, great presentation. Does someone have any question? Um, thanks for the presentation. Uh, do you know if uh, in PHP 8 they changed the allocator or something or improved anything? Mm, they didn't change much. It, basically, it's more of a change from PHP 5 to PHP 7 where they changed a lot of things. Not really in the allocator, but even in like the structures. In PHP 5, for instance, the Zen string, there was a pointer to the char buffer, so it was way easier to exploit. But in PHP 8, they mostly made um, uh, improvements to... Um, the opcodes and uh, not really to the allocator. Well, I, I don't think so. I haven't seen anything regarding this. And so basically the exploit here that I showed is you know, on PHP 8. Other questions? No? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>